was in April of 1991. My office got a call and my aide called me and said, look, we just got news that Devon's is gonna be closing. And wow, I mean, what now happens? My recollection is that uh, the initial studies showed that uh, I believe it was 17,000 people were gonna be out of work from the closure of Devon's. You didn't have to be too uh, smart to know that, that was, it was going to have an effect on unemployment and, and the businesses in the area because when you're pulling all these people out, obviously you're pulling out business. If just the town boundaries were reimposed and those properties were allowed to just meld back into the towns, the impact on the municipal budgets of, of Harvard Air surely would have been devastating. Representative Hall, who represented Ayer and myself, were the two who said, okay, this is too important for the area. I mean, how many jobs that were here that were going to be lost because uh, the Army was leaving and there was all this, there were a lot of buildings, there were job opportunities, there were a number of things that we just could not see go down the drain. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that occurred from that point on, from day one, is the local government pulled together along with the state government and the federal government and work together for the goodness of this area. Well, the legislation itself was um, a major piece of accomplishment because you had to get all of the towns involved. Challenges, um, those came mostly in terms of the three communities because their view of what should happen there was often in conflict and so trying to move them all to supporting various things was a great challenge. The bill was quite an extensive one. Um, it called for money, and anytime you have a bill that calls for money, it, it is more difficult to get through the legislature. So we got to the last week of the session in the year that the bill, we, we really needed to get the bill through. It was sitting in the House Ways and Means Committee, and it wasn't moving. Um, so we had to um, resort to, I guess you would call, creative means to get the bill out of committee. Well, it so happened that the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee at that point had a real taste for blackberry pie. So we brought him a blackberry pie and pushed for having the Devons bill reported out of committee. Guess what the last bill that was signed into law that year was? It was the Devons redevelopment bill. A failure at Devons was not an option. There was way too much riding on it. Everybody dug in and knew that we needed to deliver on this. And my job was to take the plan and make it real. And that really was about jobs, it was about investment, it was about creating community spirit. In the legislation, we took the authority of 15 different boards and commissions in three towns. Five different boards in three towns, 15 different boards and we put them into one unified development permit and that the Devons Enterprise Commission would work with. Uh, this was too important an effort to try to let the, the, the traditional uh, way of doing business um, deal with it. We were established to, uh, in effect, uh, replicate the, the number of jobs that were lost with the closing of the military installation. Uh, and to uh, you know, create a, a business environment that promotes uh, you know, three major goals, uh, economic, social, and uh, ecological uh, sustainability. The, the, the major uh, benefit that Devons has is the unified permitting process. I think the other thing that is, is quite attractive to uh, people when they come here, they know that once their application is approved, 75 days later, they're going to get a decision. It's a no-nonsense type of permitting. Either you meet the criteria or you don't. The number one attraction, as I said before, is location and the permitting. My first introduction to Devons uh, was to really understand that it was uh, a bract base. Um, and that uh, 
uh, Michael Hogan and Bill and others before me had sort of set things in motion. And uh, that now what was going to be necessary was to have really a plan that was going to be looked at yet again and made marketable, if you will, uh, to businesses. And of course, the, the sort of shining moment for that was when Bristol-Myers Squibb came along and decided uh, that Devon's would be considered uh, as a place for them to put their largest manufacturing, uh, biopharma manufacturing plant in, in the world. When we brought families in here, the, the world changed, totally. When we were just dealing with businesses, it was a business. But when you brought in the housing and you brought in the families and you brought in the children, we had to operate more as a community. And it sort of became this public-private thing in that this was a very public process run by a public agency. I think that had something to do with the fact that, uh, that a real community effort of both public servants as well as people who had become sort of the pioneer early residents of Devons, um, and then businesses that were here and others that were coming here, all found a, a very worthwhile common purpose. Devons is a model of what can happen when people demonstrate their belief in the future. It is a welcome neighbor, it is a creative neighbor, and a friend to the people in the area towns and to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Devon's is a great success story of how people during difficult times can pull together and create a new model to create something very important and very meaningful. And the best thing about Devon's 20 years in is it's just the beginning. There is so much success to build on in New England, you don't get to create a new community from scratch. Most communities in New England are 300, 350 years old. This is a 20-year-old community, and the best is yet to come.